to Atoshi Monologues, my excuse to talk, rant, and embarrass myself in front of all of y'all. Welcome to part two of three of the Hakone Adventures. Let's jump back in with a trip to the Hakone Open Air Museum. We had just gotten off of this crazy bus ride and found these cabbages growing in this pot, decorative and edible. I approve. Now off to the Hakone Open Air Museum. An open air museum just means that a lot of the museum happens outside, aka the open air, and this one is located in Hakone. Admission is 1600 yen, but if you're a student and or you got the Hakone free pass, aka the two to three day bus pass, it's only 1400 yen. We love ourselves a good discount. This museum is run by the same foundation as the museum I went to back in Roppongi with Dirty. I think most of the big art museums have some connection to the Modi Art Foundation, but I digress. This museum is like any other statue art museum, but this is the first open air museum that I've ever been to, and gotta say, I like them a lot better. It's a nice mix of nature and man's creation. Also, there are no weird smells from everything being all stuffy locked up in a couple of tiny rooms. Here, surprise with the glare. Not sure if I would call it surprising, but definitely disturbing. And look, there's the glare from the sun. Here's my sky hole. Yep, that's right, my sky hole. You go into this dark side and I assume you'll end up coming out of my sky hole. It honestly feels like you're being birthed. You're basically in pitch darkness in a very oddly warm tunnel, pushing your way through these flaps until finally you see the light. And then you head up the stairs and get spit out of this glass box into the world reborn and forever changed by that birthing experience. When I got home from Japan, I learned that my dad actually went to this museum many, many, many years ago. And he actually had this book from the museum too. While many things have been added, the sad crying face was still there. Granted, it grew a nice head of leaf hair over the past three decades, but gotta say, that's pretty cool. Father and son sharing this experience, bridging the generational gap. Although my dad had zero recollection of the crying face. What? But it's a nice thought. We stopped this program to bring you Japanese creatures. Observe the lively koi in the Hakone Open Air Museum pond. This white koi fish fellow's got some extra personality, doesn't it? Look at those sturdy fish bodies, very plump from being fed fish pellets from all the tourists. Ah, uh, that's the life. This has been Japanese Creatures. And now, let's follow these footsteps and have a nice montage of some of the other pieces at the museum. We got hexagon bubble structure, hanging mirror ball, golden mirror ball, spinning straightened out paper clips, large beetle, stacked albino edamame, the rapture, like actually they called it rapture. A maze that we weren't allowed to walk through, a giant Lincoln log play structure, giant spiral stained glass tower, with balcony view, and the main event, this egg bench, and me trying to be Gudetama on this egg bench. Okay, okay, the real main event, Picasso. Like actually Picasso. I've never seen works made by crazy famous people like this, but I guess today's the day it happens. I don't know when Hakone got this Picasso exhibit, but apparently someone at the museum knew one of Picasso's descendants and got almost all these pieces at one time. And videos are a no-go because it's freaking Picasso. But being the rebel I am, I had to share the experience with you guys. So here it is. A nice Picasso plate. Wow. Wow, don't you feel blessed? Yeah, me neither. I still can't claim to have an eye for the fine arts because even though I knew that these were supposed to be really good works of art, it all still seemed pretty whatever to me. One of the most notable things from the Picasso section was this nipple bowl, where there's a flesh colored bowl and then at the bottom of the bowl, there's a nipple because artistic vision. I really apologize to all you art people out there, but I still can't understand what makes something fine art versus a high school student thinking they're being funny with their pottery concepts. See, look at this modern art piece called Glossy Rainbow. 
Well, guess what? It's really just a rainbow on top of a white plastic chair in the museum cafeteria. But do you get what I'm trying to say? You could convince me that this rainbow was some visionary art piece, and I wouldn't think twice about it. I will admit though, that even if it was just placebo effect, being in that museum, you do feel an air of prestige and importance. The environment just feels special, you know? But I was much more intrigued by their gift shop items over the art itself. <laughs> F you. <laughs> and look how cool these macaron looking things are. It's like a soup bath bomb. You put that puck into some hot water and then it turns into whatever soup it's labeled as. Step aside, Picasso. This is some real revolutionary stuff. And my other favorite part was on the way out. They turn your picture into statues and rocks, and then you can watch yourself run around the little virtual world. Dang, my face rocks. <coughs> then we were off on our cable car adventure up the mountain, which comes free with our Hakone free pass. So please enjoy these time lapses as we head for our sky lift, which is also included in that free pass. Ah, sugoi. Here we are, all ready to bond together during the sky lifting experience. Please enjoy the time lapse as we go even farther up the mountain as ba bam Mount Fuji again. Dang, what else could we ask for? This lift actually brings you over sulfurous gas mines that spew this fog looking stuff making everything smell really strongly of eggs. And it's like real strong. They even have warnings before you go onto the lift checking for certain respiratory illnesses, just in case the fumes end up being really bad. And oh lordy, does it stank. But looking back on the footage now, when I don't have to smell the sulfur, it's real nice. And that yellow stuff around the holes is actually sulfur particle buildup. Wow, learning, so fun. The lift spits you out at the top of the mountain and you can enjoy the smoke plumes from a closer up view. And it also leads you to this famous black sulfur egg shop, which for some reason partners with Hello Kitty. At this shop, you can buy a whole bunch of different snacks that use this black sulfur egg in it. And it's said to have some cool health properties and also just bring you good luck. And one of these options is just buying a good old hard boiled egg, which is cooked in the sulfur's hot springs, giving it its nice black exterior. And they're at the low price of five for 500 yen. So basically a dollar an egg. If you want to get real technical with it, I'll throw you to this nerd. Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> well, the eggs are slowly boiled for approximately 60 minutes in a pond of hot spring water at approximately 80 degrees Celsius. Iron properties cling to the porous shells when raw eggs are boiled in hot spring water. The color of the shell is a result of a reaction with hydrogen sulfide, which produces boiled eggs with black shells. The blackened eggs are then transferred to a steam container. Then they are steamed for approximately 15 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius to complete the process. So basically, one dollar for seven extra years onto my life. Sounds like a steal to me. Let's do it. Other than the black exterior, it's exactly like a regular hard boiled egg. It peels the same, it smells the same, it tastes the same. They give you a salt packet to sprinkle onto your egg while you eat it, which I greatly appreciated. As an experience for the authentic Japanese kolch, aka culture, 10 out of 10 would recommend. And even if you don't eat the egg, if you're in Hakone, I would still say this place is worth checking out, especially because everything here is so cute. You got this sign, and come on, black egg chair? And black egg family photo? Yes, yes, and yes. Now we lift our way back down the mountain, apparently feeling more contemplative, as we work our way down to Lake Ashinoko for our last unique transportation experience. It's a pirate ship, or I guess a fancy boat, which you guessed it, comes free with our Hakone free pass. Major shout out to Julian for doing all the research regarding transportation and the Hakone free pass, and giving us all these lovely Hakone experiences. Like how many people could say they've been on Queen Ashinoko? Well, I guess anybody that's been to Hakone since 2019. But still, I feel very special. And now, boat travel clips. Ooh look, more water. The only downside is that it's freezing butt cold. 
But if you sat on the bottom floor, you didn't get the same wow factor from the lake and the setting sun. Nature never ceases to amaze me. After our lake voyage, we bust back on over to Odawara Station in search for dinner, which presented itself in the form of Korean ramyeon. A nice spicy, sweet, and savory way to end our day in the cold. It's got your veggies, your streamed in scrambled egg, your noodles, and this lovely slab of pork. Korean ramyeon is rather different from its Japanese counterpart, as you could probably tell by just looking at it. But another major difference, at least one that I've noticed, is that the noodle size and texture are completely different. The Korean version uses a thicker noodle that even in the instant Korean ramyeons versus the Japanese ramen, you can tell the difference. If you ever have a shin or noguri ramyeon at the same time that you have like a Sapporo Ichiban, pay attention to the noodle difference. The broth's flavor profile was along the lines of kalbi, but imagine boiling your kalbi and then drinking the broth from that, mixed in with a whole bunch of Korean red chili flakes. All in all, I was very pleased with it. Meat, as always, very yummy. 8 out of 10 meal. And then we end our second day with a nice Odawara station stamp. Day 2 complete. And that brings me to an end of day 2 in Hakone. Come back soon for the last day, where I experience some true Japanese culture at an onsen. And as always, eat more food. Hope y'all have a fantastic day and night, and I'll talk to y'all when I finish part 3 of the Hakone series. Not the next time. Ooh, things are shaking. Shaking bacon. No, I'm so fancy. <laughs>